The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor Wan Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for the Hadoop Summit 2014. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. So we have my co-host, big data, leading analyst, Jeff Kelly with wikibon.org. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Joe Hellerstein, co-founder and CEO of Trifacta. Really emerging, fast-growing startup. Uh, heavily funded, just announced this week, a new funding round of $25 million. Uh, great guy, computer scientist, uh, visionary, um, all, all across the world. Congratulations on the funding, welcome back. Hey, good to be here. So we're a big fan of you guys. We'd love to see the computer science uh, uh, curriculum expand into multiple disciplines with data science, just seeing all kinds of new stuff around computer science, driving a lot of new stuff, and so we'd love anytime you see you know, data, data, databases, all this stuff happening. So I got to ask you first question, what's going on with Trifacta relative to the funding and employee headcount and just status with the company? Well, you know, today we're actually here focused obviously at Hadoop World on this announcement we made of our partnership and certification with Hortonworks, so that's uh, big news for us. We're certified with Hortonworks. We're one of the few companies that's certified on Yarn, so that's part of the excitement. We did also go through this funding round, uh, 25 million Series C led by Ignition Partners up in Seattle uh, with uh, participation from our previous investors, Greylock and Excel. So that's all sort of the big news on our end. Um, we are growing, we're investing in sales and marketing, we're investing in the uh, engineering and design side of the house too, which are really important for us. So the certification thing is just on Yarn, or is it across the board on all Hortonworks? Yeah, it's across the board on the Hortonworks platform, um, and then as a special part of that, also the Yarn. Okay. Yarn so um, talk about some of the computer science things happening in the Hadoop community, and what you guys are doing to bridge kind of like that mainstream adoption as data collection and storing data to exploiting the value of data or the insights, really, whether it's real-time, actual insights, because you have the business benefits, which I would just oversimplify by saying people want real-time, actionable insights with data. Then you got the back end, which is storing it all. How do you guys connect the dots between that, those two worlds? Yeah, well, you know, you started the question with computer science, and what I'll say is that my academic uh, roots that we're evolving, I think, as a field that was strictly technical and, and really looking at sort of what are the hardest problems in computing and realizing over time that some of those hard problems that are worthy of uh, academic study are how do people actually interact with computational infrastructure, interact with data, and there's technical challenges there because really technology is supposed to make our lives easier, not more complicated. So there's lots of interesting technical challenges there, and Trifacta grew out of an exercise to try to study how do people work with data, how do analysts work with data, where are their frustrations, and how can technology be brought to bear to make these human processes uh, more efficient, more effective, more uh, accessible to a broader community, and really shorten that time to insight and increase the number of people who can do these kinds of tasks. So you guys, explain to the folks, you sell software, is it SaaS, what's the product? Can you go into a little bit of detail on that? With pleasure, so Trifecta Transformation Platform is a piece of software that you install alongside your Hadoop cluster, and then it gets access to the cluster and allows you to visually transform data from the raw form it comes in at uh, into a form that is suitable for analytics in uh, predictive analytics or business intelligence kind of platforms. Uh, so it's deployed next to a Hadoop cluster, which means that it can be deployed really anywhere that Hadoop runs. So that can be on-premises in an enterprise, it can be uh, up in the cloud in a cloud-based instance of Hadoop as well. Who's the buyer of the product? Well, that varies depending on the customer, and as we've seen, I think, uh, at Hadoop Summit today, that's an evolving story as to who's the buyer of Hadoop, right? So it starts with that's big data science projects. That's an hour conversation. Yeah, it's like it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's evolving, and what's interesting is that it's becoming increasingly uh, relevant to the line of business. And so we're seeing that in the market as we go take our product out, that that Hadoop ecosystem is starting to span from science projects to IT to that actually business-facing uses as well. So in terms of the... Um, analytics market. I want to ask you, where are you guys seeing the traction um, in Hadoop? Jeff was uh, just announcing a survey this morning. We haven't announced it publicly as, as a document, but we've been teasing it out that only about 20% roughly of people are buying Hadoop subscriptions, um, which means there's a huge tsunami coming of paying customers. Well, certainly a lot of deployments, people are tire kicking. Um, 
is it, what do you guys do outside of Hadoop relative to some of the mainstream deployments? Took a left turn on me there. So the Hadoop market in general, I would say, we are seeing some of what you're talking about, which is that um, validation of it as a platform that is not to be ignored in the future for business use cases and real adoption in the enterprise is, has come. Um, and it's, that's an awareness that is across the industry at this point. And so various customers are in different stages of, uh, of moving down that uh, path, but I think the existence of that path is very widely recognized now. And I would say that's a change even in the last six months that that sort of, that has arrived. And so that's one of the things we definitely see out in the market. Our product, I should emphasize, is a technology, it's an interaction technology in essence for how do you work with your data. And it's a technology that's not per se wedded to Hadoop. We chose Hadoop as a first platform to go launch on because we saw the promise here and also because the Hadoop environment is so agile and it does uh, sort of celebrate this idea that you should collect and gather any data you can and then empower people to transform it into shape to get use out of it. I think traditional platforms, even though they could be used for many things, are often used for much more engineered pipelines um, that are governed by sort of more traditional software. Um, that said though, I mean the Hadoop market is expanding and we will stay there and perhaps move outside of it as well as we go. Right, well I mean there's going to be a lot of opportunity in the Hadoop market for sure. I mean we're at that, we're getting close to, if we're not at that tipping point, where we're going to see a lot of those POCs start moving into production and I think that 25% number of paying Hadoop customers is going to increase significantly over the next year. Uh, but in terms of you know, your core value proposition, I think put a little context around it. So we've done some survey work and the number one challenge, technology challenge associated with Hadoop is transforming data into you know, a form that's suitable for analysis. So you're clearly onto something, onto a problem that is challenging a lot of people. And I think the real value, or one of the real value propositions here is you're, you're, you're making data scientists who are extremely expensive and rare much more productive. And that's going to obviously help their output, but it's also going to help them feel happy in their job and want to stay there. Um, when you go into customer situations, what kind of feedback are you getting? What seems to be the major driver uh, for your customers uh, when they come to you? Well, so there is an emotional aspect, I think, for certain customers, certain users, certainly, where they look at this and, and they're just so happy to have it because they really, first of all, would rather be doing other things than transforming data most of the time, but also they see our ability to make data transformation interactive and to be able to explore multiple paths and get visual feedback on what you're doing. And it just, it is pleasing in an emotional sense that very little software in our space has been traditionally. It's been very sort of boring software at some level. Um, and so we get that. Uh, we also get just you know the, the fact that when you can shorten that time to utility for your data, when you're going from raw data to something you can actually do an analytic uh, exercise on, that just tightens this feedback loop of acquire, analyze, change your business, and go back around. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the use case where there's, that's the meat of the market, I would say, for big data, is to drive change in an organization. And the bottleneck, as you say, in that feedback loop, that bottleneck has been in transformation for mm -hmm. too long now. So when you go in, what are most people currently doing for these for transformations? I mean, this has been an issue, not just in big data scenarios, but having covered kind of the data management market for many years. This is an issue with traditional data, small data, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there's a lot of, at least in, in, in my experience, a lot of hand coding going on, a lot of manual effort. Is that still what's happening in Hadoop environments? Um, what are you seeing kind of when you get in there and, and how are they doing things now uh, compared to the opportunity that you offer them? Yeah, it's, it's happening even all the more so in Hadoop environments because of the DNA of the community being so technical. Mm. So the first Hadoop you know, installations were being used by very technical organizations. They could code everything, and so to a first approximation, they just did. They would just, just code their way through any, any mountain they would run into, right? <laughs> um, in the traditional market, actually, though, once you got into really messy data, the kind of stuff that we pull in for big data, um, you also, in, in, in essence, were being dropped down into code. Even the tools from that era that were ostensibly for transformation were mostly mapping tools to map mm -hmm. schemas from one input to one output. If you had to do more than just simple mappings, you were in a scripting environment. So if you look at a, uh, the data step facilities from SAS, for example, it's a coding environment. It's powerful. But it's quite technical. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the kind of thing we're looking at. It's either code in a traditional programming language, uh, like Python or Java, or it's code in a framework that really isn't tooling very much. It's, it's forcing you to write code again. Mm. So we have some questions from the crowd chat here uh, <laughs> for you. Uh, the question first is from Bert uh, Lattimore. As users move to production with Hadoop, are they building internal systems or looking to cloud service providers for Hadoop platforms? And do you play in that? Yeah, I mean, 
as a technologist, you have to respect, I think, two really important sort of uh, laws of physics about technology. The first is that data has uh, a lot of gravity. Moving data from where it is to somewhere else in bulk is pretty expensive. So what that means is that today, most of the Hadoop distributions and most of the big data installations are on-premises and enterprises. And that bo body of data is unlikely to move en masse to the cloud. At the same time, you have to respect Moore's law, which says that in a couple of years, the amount of data being generated will be far larger and will swamp out the data we have today. And where is that data going to get generated in exponentially greater volume? In the cloud. So what I would say is most of today's customers adopting Hadoop, I see when we're out in the field on premises, I think in the future, and it's all a question of timing, but in the future we'll see uh, you know, that hosted environments are going to be the efficient place to generate, store, and analyze mm -hmm. data. And from Tripath's perspective, is it you're agnostic to whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, it's an opportunity because it's data transformation's gonna need to happen regardless of where the data lives, I would imagine. That's right. That's so right. That's, that's a good that's a good place to be uh, if you're a trifecta. Um, so I'd, I'd love to ask you a little bit about just the environment you take on the show uh, and kind of the you know the ecosystem behind us of all these different players. Um, you know, kind of what's your take on the, on the vibe here this year? Um, and, and do you feel like the Hadoop community still has the kind of the vitality it had maybe a couple years ago when it was a little bit younger and it was a little bit more of a Wild West feel to it and that we've got more, it's becoming a little more grown up. Um, is it getting a little more buttoned down? I think I'm the only guy wearing a tie here, but other than that, I mean, what's your take on kind of the community uh, environment? Well, I remember in 2008 being at Yahoo for the first Hadoop Summit, and uh, it was called Data Intensive Computing Gathering. Uh, and it is a little different now. There's fewer professors in the room, I'll say. Um, but there's almost as many people with, uh, with sort of technical cred still. I ran into one of the former Berkeley grad students who's now at one of the major Hadoop distro companies uh, who was at that 2008 meeting. He's here today. So there's a lot of the same people, you know, uh, and, and a lot of the, obviously, the executives of these Hadoop companies have that scrappy background and are yeah. still those same guys. They understand the code, they understand how people get business done with data. So a lot of that's going on. At the same time, we heard on stage today and people are talking about this is real business and it's solving real problems out in the world. I think that's really gratifying for technologists mm -hmm. uh, to see that transformation. So. It's, it's a little bit of both. I think there's more business going on. That's a good thing. That's a, the sign of the success of the technology and the impact we can really have. Uh, and so I think everybody's actually pretty happy about that. Yeah, and so we're getting some questions uh, on our crowd chat for Hadoop Summit. I wanted to, wanted to hear about some of those real world examples. What's some examples of some of the, the real business value you're delivering to some, some customers? Yeah, sure. So happy to talk about that. You know, one of the use cases we talk about is our work with Lockheed Martin, mm -hmm. um, which is in the healthcare space for the federal government. So um, there's been, I think, a real shift in recent years in healthcare to uh, a sense that in fact uh, a transition in health IT is going to happen and that this is this is finally the time where there's going to be investment not just in say new radiology machines but also in the IT infrastructure because data really informs and, and drives what can be done efficiently with uh, with healthcare and you know one of the really typical examples which is actually part of the reason we're in this this deal with Lockheed is the Affordable Care Act. So one of the pieces of the Affordable Care Act is what's called accountable care organizations and this is an incentive structure for uh, healthcare providers to hit certain metrics and if they do so there's economic incentives from the government based on those metrics. Well you got to measure yourself against these basic metrics. And if you're, a, if you're a hospital, you have many, many providers in your network who all have different billing systems, different EMR systems, uh, and a fairly large volume of data. If you're the Medicare or Medicaid uh, organization, that's a huge volume of data. And getting that data organized and ready for analysis is a ton of work. And so that's the kind of thing, you know, that's one example in the healthcare space that we've been involved in. So Joe, with. what's it like to be the CEO of a venture backed company in a great marketplace that's growing like crazy? What's your what's it like for you? I mean, obviously you do you still I mean obviously I love how you have the, the GitHub logos on you. I've been saying it multiple times on theCUBE. I think that's the future, having the little, you know, here's my code, look at what I do. As an executive, it's always impressive. But like what are you doing now? I mean, what's it like for you? Um, uh, are you happy, you bored? I mean, I can probably tell you bored because you've got a great company, but like, do you still code? Are you still doing some stuff? I mean, how do you keep fresh? Well, one of the things I've observed with startups over the years, I've been involved in a bunch of them in various roles, is that the CEO who codes is probably not a long-term thing, and it's probably not healthy for the company. So I coded a very little bit at the beginning of Trifecta, and I had research projects at Berkeley that I was coding on at the beginning as well, and I had to set that aside, because it is a very, more than full-time job running an energetic startup at the scale we're running. So I also want to leave lots of room. I have this amazing team of uh, software engineers and, and architects 
they need their room to run and they really don't need me to be a part-time coder. So my perspective is yes, I write code um, and there have been phases in my life where I do more or less. Right now is a less phase. Uh, and I think that's important for the business. Um, you know, if you're running, I think, a, a smaller shop than we are running now and intend to scale, then it starts to make some sense. But at well, some well, scale, we got a lot, you got a lot of uh, crowd favorites out there. Question for uh, uh, Joe Trifecta, CEO. How is Trifecta different than Palantir? Oh, that's interesting. So Palantir, which I honestly, you know, despite there being a very large uh, presence in the valley, I haven't spent a lot of time understanding. You can't kind of get a sense of what they do, right? Yeah, you know, they read real estate in Palo Alto. <laughs> They're buying all the buildings. I know that's right. rents going up because of them. You know, yeah. Palantir has uh, it, it been very focused on providing full solutions to you know federal, particularly security, as we know, and um, what that's included is, is a great deal of services and consulting. Trifecta is a software company, so I think at the first level, that's a, a very basic distinction. Okay, so final word I'll give you out there. Share the word, the, your own words to the folks out there. Uh, some of the most exciting things going on in the big data landscape, and pretty broad, broad uh, canvas for you to, to talk about. What's exciting to you? What really, outside of the, uh, the intoxication of running a big company, the new experiences, the team, just in the market, what technology gets you excited and that's going to be a game changer? Well, for me, uh, two things, two themes that I've been pursuing for a while are really coming to fruition. The first is that after years and years of data being kind of a, a sideline in computing, what we're seeing is that data drives computing, and there's, there's widespread acceptance of that. Yarn is a, is a piece of evidence about this. What Yarn is, is it's, it's this gamble that the, the uh, scheduling and resource management ecosystem around big data is the scheduling and resource management system that you want to use for a whole class of cloud and distributed applications. This is the data folks taking over the entire resource management for computing. <laughs> it's a, it's it's a the, bold move. It's the takeover strategy. It's an operating system, that's, right? I mean, this, the idea that you're, the internals of your data stuff is your operating system, that's bold. So I'm excited by that. Uh, so that's one theme is that data drives computing intellectually, technically, and in the market. Uh, and then the other theme, which Trifact is very much a piece of, is this idea that allowing people to more effectively use computers is the next big challenge in computer science. So this means programmer productivity for developers. It means uh, uh, that professional data folk should have tools that make them much, much more productive. And that by doing these things, it's not just that people get faster at what they do, but that new things become possible. The ability to go just at a much higher level of abstraction will enable inventions and developments uh, that we can't even imagine. And I think that's beginning to happen with more energy as we get past the problem of are my computers fast enough, which we really don't worry about nearly as much as we used to. Joe, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. You got great insight. I mean, you've been uh, a professor, you've done great programming and research, now you're running a startup and a ton of experience. Thanks for sharing here on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.